Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at menu-driven programs. So we'll look at two. First we'll look at a calculator and then we'll look at JK flip-flops. So here's our code for the calculator. You can see we have methods to add, subtract, multiply and divide. And then our menu, the main program, simply says uh, print out your menu of options, get their choice, get the two numbers, and then call whichever module or method you want to, that's required based on the user selection. So let's run this. And it says, what do we want to do? Let's say we want to add. So let's add the number 23 to the number 32. So 23 plus 32 is 55. But we don't do the add directly in the print statement. We call a method called add to do it. Let's run it again for subtract, which is 2. And let's subtract 32 from 23. 32 minus 23 is 9. Perfect. We'll do multiply and divide just so we see them all working. Let's multiply. Let's multiply something we know the answer to. Let's say 9 multiplied by 3. 9 threes are 27. Perfect. And our last one is divide number 4. And let's divide the number 27 by 9. And 9 and 27 goes 3 times, and it's a real number of value. So that's our simple calculator, but it's a menu-driven calculator. Now let's run our JK flip-flop simulator. So let's run it. So we print a little pretty picture of JK flip-flop first, and then we say what inputs do we want to put in? False, 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 true, true, false, or true, true. So we'll pick number one, which is false, false. So this gives us the first pass of the flip-flops. When we push return, it gives us the next pass of the flip-flops. When we push return again, it gives the next pass. So we'll remember that because the outputs of the flip-flop Q and Q bar are wired back into both the first set of NAND gates and the second set of NAND gates. Sometimes it takes a while to stabilize the values coming out of Q and Q prime. Let's run it again for number two. And we see the initial values, then the next set of values, then the next set of values, and then it stabilizes. We run it for three and four, it's fun. If we say three, all it says is function yet to be implemented, and the same for four. So I haven't written the code for that yet, but nonetheless, the whole menu system is working. So I'll, this is, and I mentioned this at the very start, the first week, the idea of top-down design. We've broken the problem or the program into little subparts, and we can develop each part separately from each other. That's a really neat function, I think, of good programming. And menu-driven programs allow you to do that very neatly and very nicely. So I'd always recommend using that approach if possible. All right, thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.